Hera, Slipknot, Sleep Token, Sum 41, Judas Priest, Cypress Hill, Evanescence, Mudvayne, P.O.D., Breaking Benjamin, Seether, Of Mice and Men, Clutch, Baroness, Code Orange, Avatar, Machine Head, and believe it or not, many, many, many more. Caller 10, these are yours. SonicTempleFestival.com if I left anything out. Oh, and I did. But you get these weekend stadium passes. Good luck. Caller 10, 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Authors say to write what you know, which is why he remains unpublished. How can you know nothing about anything? Alan Cox. That hack knows absolutely nothing. On 100.7 WMMS. Villian. Also, they announced that Stone Temple Pilots and Live co-headlining run with Soul Asylum. That'll be September 10 out of Blossom. I'll have those tickets for you this week, too. Those are not on sale until Friday morning at 10 o'clock. Cavalier's off tonight to get a win last night. 108 to 103 over the Pacers in Indianapolis. They will be back here at home to play the Heat of Miami. That's uh, Jimmy Butler and the Miami Heat. Holy crap. Yeah. That's what? that's a current player. Oh. <laughs> Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh. Shut, shut up, shut up. Jim- <laughs> no, 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 no. Jimmy Butler, Shaquille O'Neal, they're when all you, in there. When you said holy crap, I thought you were going to be like, I got breaking news, mm-hmm. but you were just reacting to Alan getting it right. Yeah. <laughs> Alan Cash Show. Exclusive news update. They have one of the Ball brothers or no? No, I don't think so. Okay. Anyway, Cavs heat. Um, Here, tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. Now, Sunday, they will be in Miami to return the favor at, I believe, American Airlines Arena. Unless they've changed the name of that after a a dot-com or a crypto something. So, heat Cavs tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, 6.30. When we roll out is when that pregame coverage will begin. Uh, We'll have some hot celebrity goss from Perez Bilton a little bit later on. Perfect timing for Mary to return to the friendly confines. <sighs> yes. uh, are you all right? Yeah, I'll see. All you right. like this, guys. Al and I have two cats, and one gets weird when I'm carrying the other one. I think one cat thinks I'm hurting the one I carry. Yeah, somebody alluded to that earlier, too. Again, these yeah, are I mean, these are all animals. things you'll have to figure out. And, you know. and it's one of those where I've, uh, that's why I made it very clear to my roommate. It was like, I'm not mad at your cat. Cats have dumb little cat brains. But as a human, maybe... If your friend is screaming at the top of their lungs, you come and find out what's going on. Mm-hmm. Right. Does that make you think less of your roommate? It made me really mad. <laughs> it did. Like I was. I was no, I'm in here screaming, and she kind of pads in. Hey, what's going on, guys? I was, hey, well, that's kind hey, of exactly hey. what happened. That's why I was like, it's kind of, it's probably a blessing that we didn't have any uh, hydrogen peroxide in the house because yeah. it gave me ten minutes to take a walk and cool down a little bit. Sure. Why do you think you're such an angry person? I'm angry that I was attacked and nothing was done. What, She's living what, in New York now. It's what a pressure should cooker she there. have done? She should have come running in and grabbed her cat off of me. You wanted a sense of urgency from her. Yes. Yeah. It's what I'm constantly trying to instill in my eight-year-old is a sense of urgency. Now, she is a child. Right. She's a second grader. But I don't think it's too early to ever kind of learn that, uh, time is finite, <laughs> right. and, you know. Yes, granted, conceivably, and uh, hopefully, you have your whole life ahead of you. But uh, you can never go wrong with a sense of urgency about things. And as your roommate is, as I understand it, a grown ass woman. Uh, what did she think was going on, or was That's it she exactly just exactly like, what I asked her? Yeah. I said, I get it, but I was screaming. Chloe is attacking me. Chloe is attacking me. Sarah, get in here. Chloe is attacking me. Oh, so she didn't. Mary making another (laughs) video for TikTok. No, she said all she heard was me saying Chloe's name. Ah. She's like, all I heard you saying was Chloe, Chloe. And I was like, okay, but even at that point. So she, there's no way that she could have mistaken uh, like a surprise Brian visit or something and you screaming. Uh, I don't think if Brian showed up in New York that I would scream Chloe is attacking me. (laughs) You don't know that yet. Though. Yeah, to that. throw her off the scent. I don't know that because he hasn't surprised People me. People came in New York. all over me, <laughs> but I don't think that would be what would come out of my mouth. Hmm. Which is why I, I 
collected myself enough to say, hey, how about this? Regardless of what's being screamed, as a rule, we if both... They're screaming, we <laughs> yeah, if they're we screaming, see what's happening. <laughs> yeah, come to see what's up. Yeah. If you heard somebody screaming outside, you'd go to see. You were just, screaming mm-hmm. inside. Just as a general rule, yeah. if there are any voices being raised for any reason at all. That's right. The other comes to the aid. That's a good house rule. <laughs> Oprah has a show on Hulu. I was clicking around, and there's a show called Shame, Blame, and the Weight Loss Revolution. This aired last night it's on Hulu. And Oprah um, is pretty skinny right now. I think she... Uh, has been pretty open about the fact that she went on one of the semi-glutides. She went on Manjaro or something. I don't, I don't even know if she gave them the free plug, but um, she, she lost 85 pounds. And people old enough to remember the days of the Oprah Winfrey show when she first rolled out that radio flyer full of fat back in the day. It was a big deal. Uh, that she had lost all this weight, but she had really, really put herself through it to lose that weight at the time. And uh, she did a show about how people really need to kind of uh, get hip to. There are all, there's a lot, there's a confluence of a lot of things now. You know, the magic bullet has come along that lets people lose a lot of weight. And it has forced people to rethink how they see themselves, how they see other people. And uh, Oprah, uh, you know, she divested herself from Weight Watchers. You know, she was a spokesperson and I think an investor in Weight Watchers, and she eventually eventually got out of that because uh, she was not a very good spokesperson for it because she wasn't losing a lot of weight at the time. And so that was uh, difficult on her. I love bread. She does love bread. <laughs> that, that Oprah was loves way, yeah. bread. That was one of her last Weight Watchers yep. commercials. I love bread. Sounds like my daughter. Bread's I good. I love bread. Yeah. We were having dinner at my mother-in-law's last night. We were having corned beef and cabbage, and there was a plate of crescent rolls. And, of course, my daughter is, like, you know, shoving them in every orifice in her body. Loves the. She was pulling a full-on Oprah last I night. I love bread. We can start releasing the stigma and the shame and the judgment to stop shaming other people for being overweight or how they choose to lose or not lose weight. And more importantly, to stop shaming ourselves. I think that's the bigger thing. She's saying a lot. Good pun. Uh, She's (laughs) saying a lot there, right? How we do or don't or maybe or won't or... The important thing is what? The big thing is what? The 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 shame of, on yourself. Like, just the way, like, you want to have control, but, I mean, I think even Alan here has been heavier than he wanted to be at times, and you got Everyone back. Has. And not me. Uh, <laughs> You're right. You've always wanted to be the exact Bill Squire is our right spirit now. animal. He was Skinny <laughs> Bill a few years yeah. ago. He was no, very like, Skinny Bill. It, it, that, when I gained that weight back, it hit me hard. Like, it was really depressing, and... I, you know, I, I lost 30 pounds last year and then gained some back. It's just, it's constant struggle. And some people just don't have that struggle. And it's just something that's easy for them. But like for me, it is. And you look at everybody in my family, like everybody in my family struggles with that. And it's so I would, tough. I would venture to say most people struggle with this. Mm hmm. Well, I just cried. Definitely Nicole's. the older you get. I just cried in a Coles last week. I was trying. I'm going to Vegas next week, Arizona the week after that. And cried like, in a Coles. I was trying on bathing suits. They wouldn't take your Coles cash. Yeah, it expired. No, I was trying on bathing suits and I got really upset because I'm like, I've lost weight since I've been in New York. How do I still hate everything I put on my body? We're going to Florida and, in two weeks and I'm terrified. Well, even since then, I was trying to explain it to Brian because this is when I was home. And he's like, why are you so upset? And I was like, I'm almost upset at the fact that I let myself get upset. Where it's like, sure, I'm not happy with my body, but kind of like what Oprah was saying, I was like, but I wish I was nicer to myself about it. Like, instead of looking in the mirror and being like, okay, your body's not where it is, but you just moved, you're learning, and everything about your life is new, like, you're still down weight, like, except where you are, that's the mentality I want to have. But my actual mentality is, you don't look how you should look, 
you fat piece of crap, <laughs> you know? And I, I got think, audio from that, uh, the manager of that Coles you were in. And it all slides around and it mushes out and nothing stays where it's supposed to stay. Yes, I tried on a two piece. <laughs> there was t- too many strings. <laughs> that was too many like pieces. <laughs> One too many pieces. But it is. The negative self-talk is... I'm not I allowed like- to talk about it in my house. I don't think that you should talk about it if around you have young my eight-year-old girls. daughter. Yeah, not I'm not. I'm not allowed to, and not even in a joking way, no, right? Not like at my all. wife has lost a lot of weight. Like my my wife, I think, always looks awesome, but she has lost quite a bit of weight because she wasn't happy with what she's like. I gotta whatever, so she got herself to where she wanted, and I am heavier than I would like to be right now, and I can't say anything along those lines in my house. Right. I can't go. Oh, Dad's like I can't grab my stomach and go. <laughs> You know, I can't so, do that. I can't. The week of the Funny Stop shows, so two weeks ago now, I was getting dressed, and Brian's daughter came in the room, and I was, like, jumping to pull my pants on, and she asked me why my belly was so big. And it really upset me. And I just kind of, like, looked at her, and I was like, listen, sometimes people have bigger bellies. I was like, does my belly affect you at all? And she was like, no. I was like, then don't don't ask questions about it. It doesn't matter. And, um... It, like, bummed me out that I was like, man, I hope that this isn't something. I know it, they're eight-year-olds, right? So they're, like, I think they're just honest. I don't think she was being mean No, she's or just curious. She's, she's just right. like, yeah. your belly looks different than my belly looks, you mm-hmm. know? But um, I told Brian it was Enjoy same, it for now, kid. I know. Well, I told Brian it was the same situation where I was like, I know she's not being mean. I know little kids just say things, but I wish but I I'm wouldn't let her. it get to me. <laughs> no, I wish I wouldn't be so sensitive about it, you know? I think that's the hardest part is not well, letting yourself he, get Well, here's worked the thing up. is there there's the people that like that's a kid being curious, but then there's people that are just being mean to be mean. They will do that because that's like the one thing that people always come at with me like, "Oh, so you're fat again or you look at you fat loser blah, blah, blah and like and I'm like that actually is what it hurts the least. I when think I so know, when it's when, when it's strangers when I, on the internet. Yeah, when I know yeah. you're just trying to like lash out and like I'm like, all right, like there's also a we lot all of have other mirrors. Things. Yeah, no one is more Aware. finely tuned to how they look than each person. Now I was reading a thing this morning that they, we might be getting closer to a pill that can replace going to the gym because most of these things are simple, right? Nail down your diet. But again, the diet, a good amount of diet exercise. is so and much more. Like, everybody always talks about the gym. The gym is a complement to the diet. Diet is diet everything. Diet is 80% of it. Abs are made in the kitchen is what they all. It's 90%, yeah. right? You nail down your diet. You add a little bit of exercise, you're going to be golden. Mm-hmm. But uh, they have re- they're have they looking at new chemical compounds that can mimic the health benefits of a workout. This is courtesy of the American Chemical Society, which is the ACS, by the way. I don't want you to confuse that ACS with this ACS because we do a lot of chemical research here, too. But Craig, I did mine on Sunday. Bill and I have just published, mm-hmm. by the way. We just published our uh, paper, Pound Cake's Giving It the Once Over, but mm-hmm. um, heterogeneous co-precipitation of nanocrystals with metals on substrates. Oh. Bill and I have worked for a <laughs> long time on this. And then my part is on... Ecstasy. I had someone text me about that. Not about Bill doing who, ecstasy? Not someone who someone who was with you. Who? Don't worry about it. Who's the snitch? Don't worry about it. Tell me who the snitch, snitch is. Snitch, you text, talked about it on the show. They text me. No, 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 no. This was on Sunday. Oh, before he I talked text about it. I a message on Sunday that was like, well, this is an occasion. <laughs> who is it? Who's the snitch? I'm not telling. Who told you before we were here on Monday talking about it? I don't. You I mean, he knows who he was saying with. Saying the name wouldn't mean anything. It's an out of town person. Oh, you were with someone oh, from okay. out of town, Bill. I, that was with everybody from out of town. <laughs> I think I know who it was then. Yeah. It wasn't malicious or anything no, like no. that. It was just like, well, this is something I didn't expect to encounter today. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, basically, as soon as anybody saw me, I'm like, I'm on ecstasy. Like I just told. Just like, letting them know. Yeah, because that's why I would be was acting so weird and didn't want to talk to people and just wanted to dance. Yeah, there you That's go. basically all I wanted to do was dance. Bill, ex-drug addict here. I've done it all, right? So, if you took Molly, probably in the clear. If you took ecstasy rolls, uh, about 80% of those are mostly meth. But hey, meth ain't that bad. <laughs> yeah, I have a feeling Bill would have known if he had been, if yeah. his ecstasy had been laced with meth. I, 
I'm guessing it was Molly because I've taken like I used to have an Adderall prescription, so I kind of know what meth feels like, and it wasn't methy. It was just dancey, feely, goody. Well, by the way, that was like a big thing about 15 years ago is so much ecstasy was laced with meth. Mm -hmm. And people were freaking out about that because they were like, hey, listen, it makes anything, you know, when these people are getting these huge shipments in, they're like, you cut it with something else. It makes it last longer. You charge more for it. But I hadn't heard about that in a long time. But that dude wants to make sure. But I have a feeling, too, you probably would have known uh, had you been methed out. Yeah, I wasn't like doing like jaw stuff or anything like like where it's like like grinding my teeth or anything it was literally just i just wanted to dance Mm -hmm. hey man meth ain't that bad there you go i got a break here if you want to go see bert kreischer he is bringing that fully loaded comedy festival to the hall of fame in canton bringing a whole bunch of his friends with him should be a fun time uh tony hinchcliffe whitney cummings big j dan soder uh it's going to go down june 20th down there. So I'll have a couple of passes for you after the break. 35192. Text me for anything else. And you can listen anywhere. Leave messages as well on the iHeartRadio app. Buzzard Radio. The Buzzard. He's Rover. Into your underpants.